Florida Republicans are basically denying or going to make um, release felons pay for their right to vote. So, Daniel, what's going on in Florida? Because we cover a lot of crazy stuff in Florida. Yeah, this already. isn't a Florida man story. This is a little more sinister. Uh, so, as you guys know, if you've covered our, if you've watched our content, you probably know that um, African Americans mainly, but it's really felons that have gotten out of prison in Florida now have the right to vote. Previously, it was a system where just the governor, with no, just just deciding on his own, that was Rick Scott what people could get the right to vote. And I remember there's a video out there you can look up of a of a black gentleman who has started a small business. He employs people. He's a good part of his community. He's active within his community. And he went to get his uh, right to vote back. And the governor's like, LOL, get the fuck out of here. I don't give a shit about you. And wouldn't let him vote. So there was a referendum in the last election uh, that when the governor race was happening. And in that, they said that they made a vote that Felons that after they get out of prison can vote. And so the Republicans obviously were horrified by this because Florida is already such a slim and it was a Republican leaning state. But now that a million felons can all of a sudden vote, all of a sudden all of that's up for grabs. So they're racing around looking for what to do. How can we stop people from voting? We don't have to change our ideas. Our ideas are fine. They're paid for by companies. So how do we keep these black people from voting? We try to get them because they couldn't. So here's what they're doing. They have passed a measure along party lines, obviously, requiring former felons to pay fees and fines before having their rights restored. Now, this isn't gonna affect every single felon. What they're saying is, oh, do you owe money to a li to the library? Or do you know, owe money for fees for your incarceration you haven't paid? Do you have any debt that they have? And many Americans are in debt, but Americans that have debt, again, that are many, including felons who have more debt because they've been in, they have liens against their house they couldn't pay because they're in prison, they can vote after they pay them off, after the poll tax. This is nothing but the Republicans making a poll tax and pretending it's something else. Right. So um, real quick, because um, this is a live stream show and we always want to give comments, especially those in Super Chat. Um, uh, Tri uh, Triana, be fine. <laughs> Just got here. Did you cover the people protecting the Venezuela embassy in D.C.? Paul did. We uh, did talk yeah, about we that. We already yes. covered that, but uh, don't worry. We'll be uploading these videos up very on Monday, shortly. It'll be on. That'll be on. You will get to see it if, unless you scroll back on Monday. Yes. Monday, or, I mean, yeah, if, if the live stream stays up, you could yeah. go back. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, want to watch, if you want to watch our second video and help us with the ad revenue, I would appreciate it. Yeah, of course. But no. you can, if you scroll, <laughs> you'll see it. Daniel, keep on uh, telling us what's going on so we can add yeah. our comment on this. Yes. Because I just am going crazy here yeah. in this story right so, now. So, yeah. Uh, court fees, fines, anything that you owe the state, you got to pay off before you can vote. And this is just simply put, this is them saying, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, these people can vote, how do we stop them? And they can't just, uh, because the people voted that it's, they can't just now say, well, it doesn't matter, the people voted. That was a, um, a, a referendum that actually had a legal, a legal uh, weight to it. So they're just doing whatever they can to get fewer people to vote. And, you know, I gotta say, I'm gonna quote, um, I forget what president said it, when the uh, Soviet uh, Union put up the wall in Berlin, he said, democracy has a lot of issues, but I've, we have never had to put up a wall to keep our people. And I'm gonna make a ver version of that, which is popular vote may have some issues and the people may have some issues that make them. But if you need to win your election by keeping people from voting, you shouldn't be running. Yeah. And th there's a few things that um, we're implying or we, we know or we sort of assume our viewers know that I, I, I think shouldn't go unsaid. And that is that uh, people who don't vote for the GOP, people who tend to vote Democratic or independent leaning voters tend to be minorities, tend to be uh, poor, mm -hmm. tend to not be in the wealthy sort of classes. Uh, might have felony convictions. Uh, and so, and I think it's great that uh, Bernie Sanders is very loudly saying felons should be allowed to vote even while they're incarcerated. Yeah. But something like this, it's demonstrably true that you're trying to get the outcome of an election that you want based on disenfranchising voters, disenfranchising people who likely will not vote for you. 
So, oh no, felons can all of a sudden vote and felons tend to be poor minorities for the most part and they don't vote for me. So, yeah, they're poor, yeah, let's make them pay money to vote. Then they won't vote. That's what's going on. And this, this, and this is why I think we, we, need, we really need to get on board with uh, Bernie Sanders' very vocal policy of allowing felons to vote even while incarcerated because yeah. Yeah. as citizens, that is a right that we have that should not be taken away uh, with when your liberties are otherwise Absolutely. being limited. Now, now hold on, there's a, there's a couple of things we gotta remember. The power of propaganda is very dangerous because for a long time, a lot of Americans thought that once you're in jail, you're a horrible person, the reason why you're in jail, you're a bad person, you're a villain, you're a murderer, you're a monster, you're a rapist, you're all these things. But if we really look at the US prison population, majority of prisons, pr prisoners, men and women, are in jail because of this ridiculous war on drugs. And it's really helping out the prison industrial complex, the pharmaceutical industry, and anyone else that's profiting off the war on drugs. And you know, majority of people that are in jail are in there for a long time. And these are nonviolent offenses. And the system is basically set up to keep people in prison so they have the free slave labor. Um, and when they get out, they have nothing. They have nothing to their name and they don't even have the privilege to vote. And what Bernie Sanders is offering is them a chance to reintroduce them and reintegrate them into our political system and to be into society again. They paid their debt. As far as my own personal opinion, I'm not gonna speak for Paul and Daniel, uh, but I, I think that the war on drugs is a ridiculous waste of time. It's just like prohibition. I think we it, all agree it, on yeah, that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean it's all, all what prohibition was, was some sort of failed child morality to stop people from drinking. Look. I'm going to have a glass of wine with my Italian food. No one's going to stop me. If I had to break the laws, I would go ahead and do it. Go, check out the Ken Burns documentary where they were offering like drinks to par with different foods and, 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 and uh, you know, other recipes to, to replace alcohol. I'm looking at that list and like, no, I got to break the law the next day. I don't care. I don't care, man. And it's the same thing with the war on drugs. Look at the consequence, man. Similar to it, you have all these people in jail for nonviolent offenses. And that's what makes up the, most of the prison population. And they should have a right to vote. And they should be able to reintegrate into society. And the very fact that you have Republicans and Democratic leaders uh, you know, basically saying that prisoners shouldn't have that uh, right to vote or put up a system to stop them from voting, it tells me that they shouldn't be involved in politics at all. I'm talking about the establishment leaders. The, the idea of democracy is so that everyone's voice is heard. And the minute when you stop or start telling people, uh, who can vote and who cannot vote and the reasons why it becomes a very slippery slope into something else called a dictatorship and or a limited democracy and oligarchy you know, yeah oligarchy mm -hmm. and then and then and is, is that the system we want does that sound like something does that sound like a win for a country that probably you know boasts that it's the bastion of freedom and liberty um i don't I think uh, we should let them have the right to vote. Seems more like a dystopian nightmare to yeah. me. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase CNN here. But doesn't that mean that the Boston bomber also gets to vote? Yeah, it does mean oh, that. Okay, okay. No, but that's the thing that they, that I really despise when we we saw the town hall. You guys saw that that saw it with us. Thank you for slugging through that with us. But this is the way that they frame it. They'll say, well, let me think of who's the worst person I can possibly imagine that Meghan McCain would agree is a terrible person. And then make it so that, hey, if you're letting everyone vote, you're also letting this guy vote. Now I have two things to say to that. First, for every one terrorist that you're terrified of voting, you're keeping over a thousand people that have done nothing but held cannabis, stopping them from voting too. It's almost as if it's a false shield. And I think the other angle of this is American prisons are disgusting, infested places that have no use of correction. And politically speaking, who cares? People don't like prisoners. You know who can speak up for prisoners? Prisoners. You know what a really effective way that that could happen is? If they can vote. Because you know what happens when politicians have to care about the votes, the feelings, and the condition of prisoners, you get better jails that do a better job of bringing people and getting them ready to be back, brought back into society rather than getting them in such a way that they're more violent when they leave than when they enter where they have to have those fines that we talked about in Florida get brought up. If 
prisoners have the right to vote, all of a sudden they become a constituency just like any other. And since they're sitting around, a lot of them are going to vote if they're in prison. And so we put a system together where the rights of prisoners means a little something. And we don't have women who are pregnant and getting, you know, chained to radiators when they give birth or having C-sections that are sealed up with sugar because they don't want to put any more money into actually oh my God. dealing with them. They become something that's valuable to politicians and that makes them an important part of society from a political standpoint, which makes prisons better, which makes... America better. It makes yeah. America healthier. Which makes it super understandable why the institutional support of uh, non-support, I guess, but the, the institutional uh, thrust toward keeping that from happening is in place because so much money is generated by this yeah. system, right? Uh, private prisons are a huge uh, financial windfall for state governments, for federal governments. Um, if we allow prisoners to vote, and they say we don't want prisons to be operated by private companies that's huge contracts that get lost yeah. if, if prisoners say hey we want a prison system that rehabilitates us and gets us ready to reintegrate into society and we don't want to be paid whatever two cents an hour to do slave labor for you yeah. then that's all revenue that these institutions aren't getting anymore so right. there is massive institutional uh pushback against yeah. just giving uh felons the right to vote because it's going to mean money lost from an institutional perspective. So uh, there's one final note I want to put on this story. Um, number one, let's you talk about rehabilitation, uh, Paul, mm -hmm. especially for prisoners, and especially if they want to contribute to society. Remember those brave firefighters, uh, especially those who are in a part of those prison firefighter brigades. You know they're paid like a dollar an hour just to fight fires. Now that takes a lot of courage to do that. But as soon as they get out of jail, they're not allowed to become firefighters themselves. And you think that would be a perfect job for them because they already know what to do. They yeah. have first-hand experience. Yeah. But the system put in place stops them becoming professional firemen. If I was a... I, look, I, I have no idea what it means to be a first responder, especially to be involved with the fire department. Or but forest it, fires yeah, in particular. Yeah, or forest fires or anything like that. But if I'm one of these chief you know, marshals, or I, I guess for firefighters, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I would say like, okay, you got these guys who know how to fight fires, know how to work the equipment, give them some more additional training. Come on board, guys. We need help. We need as much help as we can get. Right. These forest uh, fires are getting worse. And boy, wouldn't it be great if there were people that knew how to do this and, and had experience. Yeah. And, and, and remember, to get the medical certificate, you can't be a felon. And then, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, too, there's a quote from Matthew. White-collar criminals get to vote, even after ruining the lives of many, and they get to manipulate the votes of countless others. So yeah, they get to the vote. truth is, white-collar criminals generally are able to avoid uh, felony charges or, and even getting incarcerated at all. Now, uh, because it's, you know, if you have money... You can be above the law to a certain extent in the United States. Now, we did get a $2... From, uh, DCK Punk to comments up. Uh, DCK. Okay. Uh, man, I've been waiting all week uh, to see what you guys had to say. All right. Thank you for the $2, my friend. Uh, it, you know what? It helps us out a lot, especially with our independent media. And, uh, you know, you really helped keep this network alive. Viewers like you, thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for the super chat. Yeah.